Barcelona Sagrada Familia has been under construction for over 140 years. making it one of the longest architectural projects in history. What's even more incredible, when it's finally completed, it will become the tallest church in the world, soaring 172 and a half meters into the sky, a height carefully calculated to be just shorter than Barcelona's Montjuic Hill out of respect for nature. After decades of slow progress, modern technology has changed everything. Advanced 3D modeling, robotic stone cutting, and prefabrication techniques have accelerated construction. Bringing Antony Gaudi's vision closer to reality, the final six central towers are rising, and by 2026, 100 years after Gaudi's death, this masterpiece will finally be finished. But one question remains. Will it stay true to Gaudi's original design, or has modern engineering changed the Basilica forever? Let's find out. It all started in 1882 in the heart of Barcelona. Urxella Jose Maria Bocabella had a dream, a church so magnificent that it would inspire generations. He hired architect Francisco de Paula del Villar to bring it to life and construction was underway. Del Villar envisioned a traditional neo-Gothic structure, complete with pointed arches and intricate facades. It followed the architectural norms of the time, but things didn't go as planned. Disagreements over cost and artistic direction soon emerged. Tensions grew and after just a year, Del Villar walked away. The project was at a crossroads. And that's when a young architect named Antony Gaudi stepped in. Gaudi didn't just take over the project. He reimagined it completely, inspired by nature. He imagined a basilica that defied convention. Spiraling columns, organic shapes, and breathtaking facades that told stories in stone. His design was nothing short of revolutionary. The plan? A monumental masterpiece with 18 spires. The tallest of them would soar to 172 and a half meters, making it the tallest church in the world. But there was a catch. From the very start, the project faced one massive hurdle, money. Unlike other grand cathedrals, which had royal or state backing, this one relied entirely on private donations. And that meant progress was painfully slow. By the time Gaudi died in 1926, less than 25% of the church was complete. Then disaster struck. In 1936, the Spanish Civil War ravaged Barcelona, and Gaudi's workshop was destroyed. His original models, blueprints, and notes gone. With no detailed plans left, architects faced an enormous challenge. How do you continue building a masterpiece without its creator's guidance? For decades, construction crawled forward, slow and uncertain, but then technology changed everything. 3D modeling, computer-aided design, or CAD and CNC stone cutting have revolutionized the process. Engineers can now shape stones with pinpoint precision, bringing Gaudi's intricate designs to life faster than ever before. Now the race is on. The goal? To finally complete this architectural wonder by 2026, 100 years after Gaudi's death. But what exactly is left to build? And how are today's engineers finishing a 19th century dream with 21st century tools? Well, right now, the most critical phase of construction is underway. The completion of the six central towers that will forever change Barcelona's skyline. After more than a century of delays, breakthroughs, and evolving construction methods, the long-awaited finish line is finally in sight. Once completed, these towers will stand as the crowning achievement of the Sagrada Familia soaring 172 and a half meters into the sky. But how do you complete a structure that has defied convention from the very beginning? Gaudi's vision was anything but ordinary. He rejected rigid Gothic traditions in favor of an organic, gravity-defying design inspired by nature. Instead of flying external, instead of relying on external buttresses, he created self-supporting columns, fluid facades, and a revolutionary tower system that distributes weight with stunning precision. The final towers followed this same radical approach. Rather than painstakingly placing each stone on block site, the construction team has taken a more advanced route. Entire sections are pre-assembled off-site, ensuring every piece fits with pinpoint accuracy before being hoisted into place by cranes. This method isn't just efficient, it's 16 times faster than traditional stone stacking, dramatically reducing both time and the risk of misalignment. Each level of the tower consists of eight panels, and each panel is made of up to 16 individual stone blocks. That means every single piece must align flawlessly, because even a one millimeter misalignment could throw off the entire structure, forcing delays or even rework. But speed isn't the only challenge. 
what about the stone itself? When Gaudi began construction in the late 19th century, he chose multicolored sandstone from Montjuzic, a mountain near Barcelona. Its warm hues of red, brown, and yellow gave the basilica its signature look. But there was one big problem. The Montjuzic quarry shut down decades ago. So where do you find stone that looks exactly like what Gaudi envisioned? Engineers searched the globe, hunting for materials that could match both the color and texture of the original design. After an extensive search, they found the perfect substitutes. Buff grit stone from England, carefully selected for its light brown tones, red puffery from Iran, adding depth and warmth, and blue granite from Brazil, providing contrast and richness. Finding the right stone was just the beginning. Shaping it was even a bigger challenge. Gaudi's design is full of intricate details, but his original models were lost during the Spanish Civil War. That meant stonemasons had to rely on hand-drawn sketches and photographs, painstakingly carving each piece by hand. It was slow, meticulous work. And then came modern technology. The construction team introduced CNC, or Computer Numerical Control, stone-cutting machines which carve intricate geometric forms and organic curves with robotic precision. These machines can shape even the most complex stone elements in a matter of days, a task that would have taken skilled artisans months or even years by hand. The accuracy is unparalleled, ensuring that every spiral column, flowing arch, and delicate ornamentation perfectly aligned with Gaudi's mathematical proportions. However, technology alone isn't enough. Master stonemasons still play a vital role, chiseling the final features, refining ornamental details, and ensuring each surface has the unique character that defines Gaudi's organic handcrafted aesthetic. While stone cutting technology has made things faster, the biggest concern remains structural stability. The Sagrada Familia is a masterpiece of stone, but its immense height and intricate design make it vulnerable to earthquakes, high winds, and even the natural weight of its own materials. So how do engineers ensure that this towering basilica, once fully completed, will stand strong for centuries? Well, the answer lies inside the towers, where an ingenious structural system ensures both strength and flexibility. Gaudi relied on parabolic arches and hyperboloid columns to evenly distribute weight, but modern engineers have added something he never used, a hidden steel skeleton. Within each tower, massive steel tendons run through the stonework. These tendons, similar to those used in modern suspension bridges, are tightened using hydraulic jacks. This process creates compression, essentially locking the stones together in a way that prevents shifting, cracking, or failure under pressure. Now, this reinforcement is crucial because strong winds at these heights, where gusts can reach speeds of 37 miles per hour, exert tremendous force on the basilica's delicate spires. Without internal support, even a small misalignment in one stone panel could create a chain reaction potentially weakening the entire tower. The hidden steel structure helps absorb these forces, reducing stress on the delicate masonry. The same system also helps with the seismic stability. Although Barcelona is not in a high-risk earthquake zone, occasional tremors are possible. The steel tendons act as shock absorbers, allowing the structure to flex slightly rather than crack under seismic pressure. Gaudi may not have had access to steel reinforcement and hydraulic jacks, but his designs were decades ahead of his time. By combining his natural forms with cutting-edge engineers, modern architects are ensuring that the Sagrada Familia will not only reach completion, but also endure for centuries to come. Yet, despite these challenges, progress has been relentless. In recent years, two of the Basilica's key towers were completed, marking major milestones in its construction. But the most anticipated moment is still ahead. The completion of the tallest tower set to rise 172.5 meters into the sky. Alongside the towers, other essential elements are also being finalized. One of the most significant is the Chapel of the Assumption, located within the cloister. It will feature arched stone vaults, intricate mosaics, and traditional Catalan-style ceilings, all meticulously crafted to stay true to Gaudi's original vision. But what would the Sagrada Familia be without its mesmerizing stained glass? Even as the structure rises, artisans continue their painstaking work on the windows that fill the basilica with breathtaking light. For decades, master glass artist Joan Villagrau has led this effort, designing windows that transform the interior into a living canvas of color. In the morning, soft blues and greens filter through the east-facing windows, casting a cool, tranquil glow. By evening, fiery reds and golds from the west bathe the space in warmth, creating a constantly shifting spectacle of light and shadow. Yet even as construction enters its final stretch, one major controversy remains the long-debated grand staircase leading to the basilica's main entrance. Originally envisioned as a monumental approach, this staircase has become one of the most divisive elements of the project. While much of the basilica is nearing completion, its absence continues to fuel debate over the final design. Gaudi's original blueprints depicted a massive ceremonial staircase extending from Carrari del Malarorca and creating a grand approach to the church. The plan called for wide, elevated steps, leading visitors into the vast interior. The staircase would not only provide an on 
sparring entryway, but also serve as a public plaza, seamlessly connecting the basilica to the city. But there's a major problem. To build it, entire city blocks would need to be demolished, displacing over 1,000 residents and businesses. Some of the affected buildings have stood for generations, and many residents refuse to leave. Legal disputes and heated debates have dragged on for decades, with local officials, heritage groups, and city planners unable to reach a consensus. While officials continue to deliberate, the controversy remains unresolved, whether it happens now or in the distant future. One thing is certain. The staircase remains an integral part of Gaudi's vision. Looking ahead, everything points to 2026, the 100th anniversary of Gaudi's death, as the year Sangrada Familia will finally be structurally complete. But decorative details, including sculptures and fine carvings, will continue till at least 2034. It's been a journey spanning five generations, surviving wars, financial struggles, and even a pandemic. But after 142 years, construction is finally nearing completion. Soon the world will see the Sagrada Familia exactly as Gaudi envisioned. But what do you think of this project? Let us know down in the comments below. And if you want to see more updates on incredible construction projects around the world, subscribe, hit the like button, and turn on notifications so you never miss a video.